Good day. So today we're going to do a video here about loading a Honda Civic onto a U-Haul Auto Transport. So uh, here's the trailer, there's the tow vehicle, there's the Honda. So basically when you rent one of these things you got to give uh, U-Haul the combination of vehicles you're towing. This trailer is rated for 7,500 pounds all in including itself. Then uh, so the vehicle, the tow vehicle has to be rated for that much towing capacity depending on what uh, the weight of the vehicle is that's going on the back. So I guess they have the weights of everything figured out and they'll use their computer program to tell you if you're allowed to tow or not. Unless you have like a Ford Explorer or something, they'll just say get lost, we're not going to let you uh, tow with that vehicle because you're not safe. So this, uh, one thing that's funny about U-Hauls is they use inch and seven eighths and two inch balls on the same coupler. So you should go to U-Haul and buy the ball from them because it's a 7,500 pound two inch ball, which is kind of an odd ball is the word I guess you'd use. You're not gonna find that really anywhere else. And then uh, their stuff is pretty cheap anyway. So if you have a 7,500 pound equipment here and 750 pound uh, capacity, you're good to go because they're gonna come outside and check what you're hooking up with in some locations but not all locations. And if you have a uh, seven terminal hitch, you're going to want to look for uh, either an adapter or perhaps depending on the vehicle, you might have a four way hidden somewhere. This is kind of gummed up. I need to clean it out before we go anywhere. So that's something you're gonna need because they're gonna check the lights and they're gonna take a picture of your hitching situation before you leave so that they can say that the, it was good to go before you took off. So when I got this trailer, I didn't do a good inspection on it, and there's a few things wrong with it. For one, it has surge brakes on it, which are like hydraulic brakes. That's why there's such an elaborate coupler on here. And it's low on brake fluid. That ball should be floating, and it's sunk down. So that's uh, something I should have made note of before I left, because I'm kind of stuck with it the way it is. But uh, I could tell that the brakes are working decent on the trailer empty. So I'm not going to be completely depending on the vehicle's brakes, so I'll go along with it. You want to check these straps and make sure that they're all together. As you can see, people like to drag these things. When I picked it up, it had one chain on the back. But it didn't have a hook or anything on it. They had dragged it down to a stump. So normally you're going to get this with a rubber connector on it. And if you don't have the rubber connector, it's not the end of the world. You can use uh, some tape, some electrical tape, or just even a rag and tie a knot over that so it doesn't fall off. So this chain was all torn up and not usable. This chain was gone altogether. It just had the three links welded to the frame. The rest was gone. So I think someone dragged that. Instead of being a man about it, they just uh, took it off and threw it away. So I went to uh, another U-Haul, their uh, fleet store, and they put two new chains on the trailer, but I hadn't noticed the uh, brake fluid at that point. So this thing is a bit of a, a piece of junk, which is something that U-Haul has been trying to get away from, but it's uh, sort of the way they roll sometimes. So this tire is just about bald. If you look at my trailer tires, they're in the same condition. So I can't fault them too much for that other than they're renting this out and I don't rent mine out. And the uh, wiring repairs are, ugh. Anyway, the, we'll get past the technical side of things and we will uh, get around to hitching this thing up and we will get uh, the Honda on it. So one thing you're gonna wanna do is find a place where you've got space to do this. So I'm gonna go over to uh, a commercial facility to load this up so I can get everything kind of straight rather than forcing it. Oh, one other thing, because this has surge brakes, you can't back up with it when it has a load on it. This uh, contraption here pushes against there, or the other way around, I should say, right? That coupler slides in this uh, location and pushes against here. So if you need to back up you're gonna to have to clamp vice grips on here and on there. 
so that things can't move. That's about the best thing I could suggest. You could shove a block of something in here too to try to stop things from moving, but uh, you have to remember to take it off, otherwise you don't have any trailer brakes. So anyway, we'll get on to uh, hooking this up. All right, so just to uh, hook this up, you can push the trailer side to side a little bit, but you're not gonna be able to push it forward. So we'll see if we're close enough or not for it to hook onto the ball. So I'll have to back up a little bit. So what happened here was I'm hung up on the hitch so I won't be able to proceed. I'm going to have to lift this back up and down again so I can get it to Dragging. Now we're going to take a look at uh, chains. So there's three chains here that need to be done. I usually do the breakaway chain last because it's uh, a little bit tricky to slide it through. You cross these chains. I've already had this hooked up so I kind of know how much slack I'm going to have. So you pass this through here. takes a couple different approaches to get it. I'm going to put it back on the uh, eye that it came from. I've got enough chain here that I can turn without any trouble. So that one's from that side. Now we'll do this one from this side. This is where the uh, pin starts to get to be a problem from time to time. Well, we have to go back to here. This is one thing I should have done first. This is a bit different than most trailers I've got. In fact, I don't have any trailers that have one of these couplers on it. You want to tighten this up as much as you can. Now, and then you'll move the vehicle a bit and you're going to try again. So what you'll see is there should be a fair amount of thread here. If you're up near the top then you're definitely not good to go. So before we load the vehicle we're going to check that again. Because if you got it wrong, as soon as you put the car on the back of the trailer, the coupler is going to pop up and go through the back of your vehicle. So you do not want that to happen. Just slide it 
slide this one through. We're going to grab back onto its uh, connector here and use this rubber thing. If you don't have the rubber thing, like I said, you can just wrap some electrical tape around it or packing tape or whatever you have uh, available to you. So now we're going to do the breakaway chain. I put it on the side that doesn't have the uh, clevis. It's just usually there's more space to do it. You kind of have to hook it through. It's like uh, one of those puzzles that goes only together one way. And turn it backward. Because it's starting to get tight when you got two chains in the same opening. So we got that through. Now this one, I'm just going to hook it on right close. Because you don't want this one to uh, get tight when you're turning. Because it's going to flip up the brake and then you're really going to be in trouble. I've never had that happen, but I don't think it would be good. So the next thing to do is get the electrical in. Move the camera to this side. So you're going to want to get it in as far as you can and then check your brakes and your lights and whatnot. This one's a bit of a mess. So I'm kind of only part way in. So I'm going to turn on the vehicle lights and the four ways and that will be able to test everything because it's a, a four-way connector so your brakes and your turn signals are the same connection. Alright, right now I got absolutely nothing. So I'm going to try it. this around a bit. Alright, so that's why you're better off using a 4-way to 7-way adapter if you've got one because you can just replace it easy when there's a, a problem. So let's take a look at the lights on this thing now. It's got the four-way blinking. License plate light, one of them works, it's good enough. These are brutally strong trailers. I've, you wouldn't want to push them to the limit because you're going to pay for it if you break it. But. Uh, I'll tell you, I've pushed them through some pretty big snow banks without doing any damaging, other than when the wiring is kind of exposed. So you got to watch out for that. We got all of our lights here. So the Honda is just about ready. We'll just uh, jiggle the vehicle back and tighten this up one more time. So I just kind of put it in reverse drive and then neutral and then park again. See if we can get any more turns on this thing. We can push that down to disengage it. I might have gotten like one turn, that's about it. So now I'll just move this uh, downtown a little bit. i bring the car over and we'll pop the car on top. All right, so before you get your trailer hooked up here, you can just verify everything is still attached, nothing has popped off. We're all good to go because again, like you don't want this to lift up and go through the back of your vehicle. When you're trying to load, you'll get your uh, straps pulled back here if it's the winter and they're all frozen up. That might be uh, an issue. I've had that before. You get your front axle chain down where you can reach it. Pull your planks out. You can't pull them out too far. From my experience, maybe it's possible, but I've never had that happen. Get your rear axle chain down, and you'll flip this down so you can get out of your vehicle. Just pull those two rubber things. So you should be, in theory, ready to get this thing on here. So you're not going to put anything in your vehicle because you want your uh, tongue weight to be high. If you put a bunch of garbage in your trunk, 
it's going to tilt the trailer backwards and it's going to be dangerous so don't do that there's not much you can do about putting stuff in your vehicle because unless you put it in the driver's seat really but even then the driver's seat is going to be kind of just on the front axle it's not going to be before the tongue or between the axle and the tongue so i wouldn't really recommend it so at this point you're going to get the vehicle lined up try to get uh, everything as straight as you can so you get it the ramps nice so you can walk down to the back of the vehicle and kind of look forward and see if you're uh, lined up or not looks like i need to move over an inch probably make it but might as well get the thing loaded up nice here so if you have a two-wheel drive pickup truck or anything you should put the parking brakes on because what will happen is in some vehicles you'll lift the rear axle up a, a little bit and its vehicle is going to start to roll away with you halfway on the trailer so if that happens just keep going you got to be committed when you're loading that's why you load on a flat ground this isn't completely flat but uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much like even if it was a uh, some four-wheel drives if you lift a front wheel they'll start to roll so definitely set your parking brake before you do this otherwise you might get into some surprises where the thing rolls off but if it happens like I said you got to be committed you got to go for it otherwise uh, it's going to be a bigger mess than it already is all right so I think I'm pretty lined up the trailer is nice and dry hopefully I don't get hung up uh, as I reach the uh, top of the ramp here and I can carry on if it's wet out your tires are going to spin on this uh, steel so keep that in mind that's another reason you got to be committed at the right speed but not too fast we'll try this out I'll show you what I just got hung up on here. But uh, generally, we're on quite good. So a piece of plastic got hung up. So I will have to deal with that when we get to our destination. And what you do when you get where you're going is you run the vehicle through the car wash so that the people in the new town don't think you're a slob and uh, go over the vehicle and see if, if there's any damage you've done to it loading it up and uh, we'll start getting the chains on here in a second i might just show you how i get them done after the fact but the important point is not to hook on to anything fragile like brake hoses or electrical connectors and uh, same with the uh, straps so i'm just going to roll this back forward i was going to try and drive it off and then drive it back on to show you the uh, process of coming off the trailer but uh, I suppose not I just want to limit the damage we do to the car and we'll take care I'm sure you can figure out how to get off the trailer but as long as you're completely disconnected you'll be all right so you can kind of see that the seat is above the uh, front wheel here so uh, I guess that is about it we'll just check this thing one more time make sure we can't get any more clicks out of it so so that's good. If you have an inch and seven eighths ball, it's going to be kind of clunky. I found that some receivers are tighter than others. Like this one's kind of loose on the Jeep with this uh, hook up here. But on my uh, van, you can't barely slide this in. And it's not from the van being rusty either. It's just got a bit tighter tolerance. So uh, some of them are a little clunkier than others. There's not much you can do about that. So we'll just uh, get this thing on here and carry on. So thank you for watching. All right, I almost wrapped up the video without showing the thing finally fully connected. 
So uh, you just slide this through the ratchet strap and you can click it a few times. Don't let that drag. This one has been worn down pretty good. It's kind of annoying. You can see I'm not completely centered on the trailer. I'm off by uh, a letter of the alphabet. This one here, I had to loop it through a couple times. And then this sort of the natural locking location for these is up like that. And you have to pull it to get it ratcheting again. So you want that there. The front axle chain, I just wrapped it around here a little bit. And there's a factory tow, a factory tie down location on the front of this vehicle. So I stuck it there. If it rolls off, it'll catch it before it goes too far. Put the uh, fender back up. Obviously, you'd never get the door open. on either side. Make sure you got it. I've seen people driving through town dragging these things and it's not that easy to stop them. So just try to get that right the first time. Then here I've kind of wrapped the chain a few times just to tighten it up. And there's another uh, factory tie down point here so I grabbed that. If not you could throw it over one of the, uh, the rear axle and the front axle. I've had this vehicle, this is the first time I've had it on this kind of trailer. I've had it on the uh, tow dolly a couple times in the past. And it's pretty much uh, the same thing other than it doesn't have a rear axle hitch or axle chain. And you just uh, drag the tail on it. But this works pretty good. So uh, I think we've got everything we need to show you here. There's nothing uh, in the vehicle. Nothing in the trunk. This uh, vehicle's kind of loaded. You got to be mindful of what the towing capacity on a vehicle is, including the uh, cargo. So it'll be okay. I'm going to go over a scale just for the heck of it. And uh, we'll be in our new destination here in a, a few hours. All right, we're about two hours into the trip now. Things are going good. So this uh, Jeep has a bit of a lift on it, so it's two inches in the front and back. So uh, it would be pretty much bottomed out right now. If you can see with the contrast or not, you go out two inches of gap. And that wheel well, and then this wheel well is exaggerated because of the uh, lift on it. But uh, regardless, things are going good. The trailer brakes are kind of jerky. It's really s sliding a, quite a bit before the brakes engage. It's kind of annoying. But uh, other than that, Jeep's a good tow vehicle. It's a good combination. I did skip going over the scale, so I don't have any uh, final weights for you, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, thank you for watching.